Coming up, we're going to be talking about Disney launching its own Netflix-style subscription service. All that and more coming up in the Disney Kingdom Daily Show. What's up, everyone? Roger here from DisKingdom.com. I'm going to be running through some of today's big stories, which includes... Um, Disney have pretty much just come out and said that they're going to be launching a brand new subscription service. Actually, they're going to be launching two. I mean, one coming in 2018, which is going to be based on ESPN, which is the sports side of things. There's then going to be a Disney version coming in 2019, which will be launched in the US. will be following in other areas after that. Um, it's kind of this is all part of the of their quarterly results which they revealed, and they also announced that they have brought a majority stake home holder price in Bamtech, which is a company they purchased previously um, some shares in. They've now got 75% of the company, and now this was a company created by the Major League Baseball, and it's all about the infrastructure for streaming services and streaming networks and stuff. They've brought this um, to basically booster up their system, so they have got the systems in place to launch these networks. Um, and the, the number of different platforms use this one, including, for example, the WWE Network, which is something that I subscribe to, which works very, very well. And the idea really is, I think Disney have purchased this, so they have got the best technology and the best systems in place to implement this new system. So first off, the ESPN. The reason this is being launched primarily is each time there is a quarterly results, and it was the same um, at this week, um, ESPN numbers are down, the subscribers are coming down, revenues dropping down, people are just cutting the cord of the traditional television in droves, and so they want to launch their own subscription service based on that. So this is going to be launched. But the big news really that kind of came off of that was this news of the Disney version, which is going to be kind of similar to Netflix. Now here in the UK, they actually launched a system called Disney Life um, a while ago, which includes movies, includes TV shows, books, audios. They did have games, but that got um, took it, taken out of it, and it's about four ninety nine. Unfortunately, the only reason I do not subscribe to that system over here is because they do not have smart TV apps, and I want to be able to watch that on the TV rather than on my iPad, or even if there was a, an app on the PlayStation or Xbox, I would use that instead. Um, tons of things over here. So for us, it's nothing really new, but I suspect what's going to happen is once this major new system is up there, it will be renamed, or even the US version could even be called Disney Life. It's launched in China, it's launched all over the place, so it's a little bit of a testing bed, I think, to see how that was going to work. Big news from this is going to have... All the Disney movies, Pixar movies, um, Disney like television shows, and the um, the networks and stuff they have. They're all going to be creating exclusive content and movies for this year. What that does mean is they're going to let a number of the current rules that they have in place, for example, with Netflix, they're going to once they end, they will then be kind of. That will no longer happen. So the Disney movies are going to be coming off of Netflix once the deal expires. And they'll all be moving on to this platform. No word yet on what's going to be happening with Star Wars and Marvel. That was kind of kept tightly whether or not they're going to launch separate systems for them. Personally, I'd love it all under one big roost. And I think they're maybe just testing the waters, see how that goes. Personally, like I said, I think Marvel and Star Wars especially should be there. Especially when you think you've got like Star Wars Rebels and the animated TV series. Now, there are, there's there been kind of an interesting reaction to this. Um, first off, you had a lot of people reacting from the point of view of loving the idea. You know, they want everything all under one roof. It's a lot, lot easier. A lot of people that are already subscribers to Netflix aren't happy that those things are going. This is one of the major problems with digital distribution is if you are subscribing, you do not have access to everything for life. These things very much come and go. You know, they can put one TV show on there and it can be removed the next month. This is how it goes. It's not permanent, unlike buying, for example, a Blu-ray or something like that. Now, the issue a lot of people is they don't want to be keep paying for all the different subscription services. They all started cutting the cord to try and save money. And unfortunately, it looks like there's, you're going to need lots of different platforms depending on what you're going to be watching. However, it is your choice if you don't want to watch it. You don't have to pay for it. For me personally, I took out a Netflix subscription to watch Daredevil and all the Marvel TV series. We've kept it on because there's enough stuff on there that I feel like it's value. But I recently myself even cut the cord and cut off Sky and now I've got Amazon. However, I'll be honest, you know, if Disney's system is better, I will dump Amazon or something like that depending on what's on there. And that's going to be the key thing. If it's got exclusive content and what I want to watch, it will be there. But the traditional television network systems are dying and they are all going into this a la carte thing. I did actually post this question out on Facebook and Twitter earlier today just to get a feedback from our audience and stuff and from our fans. So just going to quickly just read through some of these here. Um, first off on Twitter, 
I asked about it. Um, Infinity Ram said, "Good news for Disney is not great for Netflix. I don't really don't want another streaming box, but it, if the pen, but the content might be worth it. Now that's the big key thing, streaming box. I don't think they're going to need to require their own box. They have talked about that in the past. I think they would be better off going through um, other apps and other devices." That's half the appeal of Netflix is everything is under one service, one app. Now, if every network has its own portal, it'll be such a hassle. And that was um, here. And then I see yeah, it continued on. I sincerely want to drop them. We might have a party to celebrate the cleansing of our house. We cut it six years ago. So kids never knew Disney Junior, just DVDs and lots of kids show streaming. And which he carried on about everything's on um, Junior XD. And also Jason said, I'm really tired of everyone making them watch their own stream. I just want one site that has everything I want to watch. Which I think is a key thing. And there, that seems to be the general gist. There's a lot of people like, I don't like having all these platforms, all these different apps. It's getting too complicated. It's too expensive as well. Um, you know, but by the time you have all these different shows, depending on what it is, it then does, could you say, it could encourage... Um, piracy that's been one thing i've seen quite a bit on social media if they keep the pricing right it could be all right but if they have exclusive shows i mean they've got all the abc stuff as well whether or not they want to continue to syndicate that out from disney's point of view i can see why they want to keep everything in house and why would you want to be um, having netflix pay you and have control over your content when disney are a big enough network in my opinion to do it it's not like a smaller one but for example here in the uk when i'm watching television you know each of the networks generally all have their own systems and there's lots of different ones that you can buy in on however the main ones are coming forward but i think disney have got a key point here with the franchises they've got now let's have a look here and let's jump over to what the comments were on facebook and we get asked um tim basically just come back with a yes with the big four gift so that one's pretty good um milton responded everyone claimed playing that it was too expensive to pay for cable only get a bunch of channels you didn't want now every content producer in the world is going to get um, nickel and dime the customers to death which is a continuous thing um marina said i'm sorry to say it's just no whatever way for disney to make money from its fans which i would agree that is generally what businesses are there for so um uh, Jeffrey said they continue to spiral downwards as greedy company that has lost its magic years ago. Um, BJ um, said about it depends how Marvel is affected. Becky said greed. Um, Conrad said pass. Travis from the site said um, smart move for Disney. Why let others profit off your properties? Bill said long overdue. Jeremy said sounds like a flop. And Daryl said no thank you. So there we go. So that was just a quick feedback. So this is something I will be doing um, on the Daily Show is just jumping in and putting a question out on our social medias but i'd also like to know if you are watching or listening to us let me know what you guys think in the comments below on that subject i'd love to know your thoughts i'll be reading them and also responding to them on there as well so there we go that was off of like the netflix things i'm sure we're going to be going to this a lot more depth as we find out a little bit more information other things from that um there wasn't really a huge amount really coming out of that quarter that was the main news um sort of basically tv dropping down they're doing quite well at the box office. Not as well, depending on each quarter. The trouble is with each quarter, it depends what's come out. They had Guardians of the Galaxy and Pirates of the Caribbean. But when they compare it to the previous one with like Rogue One, it's it all depends on what's going on. Box office looks fine with that there. Um, revenues at the parks has gone up however um sort of the games and stuff haven't really done too well and stuff it's it's not really the time of year really for toys and stuff so that's generally why that is not a huge surprise like i said the main news really was that streaming thing and also you know that they're doing very well with shanghai and disneyland paris that's all kind of kind of finish off the show so first off if you are a uh, gaming fan um also to um it was revealed today that um Bolt is now available on the Xbox One as um, backwards compatible. I put this up on the disc gaming site so you can now put the disc in or you can purchase it. Also, um, Pop Vinyl fans, um, a brand new Pop Vinyl is going to be coming out this coming Friday at D Street and Le Pit Chenet or Chalet at the Disneyland Resort. Or, um, these are only going to be available at Disneyland. You're not going to be able to get them at Walt Disney World or online. Um, expect these to sell out very quickly. It is a park exclusive. Um, I think it looks awesome, but this one again is going to be very, very, very difficult to get hold of. You'll find all the information over at popvinyls.com. And finally, we have a little bit of news about some a special photo pass day in 2017, which is going to be taking place on August the 19th. Disney Park Blog put up a story. I'm going through all the details. 
to celebrate National Photo Day, they're going to be doing these photo passes. So there's going to be special experiences, for example. Mika will be joining Pocahontas in Discovery Island in the Animal Kingdom. Timon will be joining Rakifi at Rakifi Watch. You're also going to have um, the Jungle Book Magic Shot is going to be coming to the Yakin Yeti Restaurant. Um, while over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Maleficent and Cruella de Vil, will be available at the Sunset Showcase available from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. There's also going to be some extra options available there. Epcot is going to see the genie will be with um, Princess Jasmine in the Morocco Pavilion and Mushu will be joining uh, Mulan in the China Pavilion. And there's also going to be some extra opportunities there. Um, finally as well, we're going to have over at the Magic Kingdom, Dopey will be joining Snow White at the, the Town S Square Courtyard. And Captain Hook will be joining Peter Pan in Fantasyland. And as I said, there will also be some more uh, photo opportunities, for example, like the recently um, Tangled Lighting Painting photos and Cinderella's Coach. While over in Disney Springs, there's going to be some special photo opportunities, for example, with a book and stuff. No word yet on what they're going to be doing for um, Disneyland, but I suspect they'll be doing something pretty similar. Love the idea that they're bringing out these um, characters and I think just in general getting the sort of social images out there on all the different social media platforms stuff is great publicity and it's also just great if you're at the parks and any chance to meet them well anyway, guys thank you very much for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube you can also follow us on the audio platforms as well find us over at thiskingdom.com and all the different social medias quick note to say as well I'm giving away a $20 um, store discount for um, Nintendo, PlayStation, etc. You'll find all the information over at DizKingdom.com forward slash giveaway. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you tomorrow. Later.